using multi-layer soft topography. The rotary pump chip is one of our simplest devices. The first step in multi-layer soft lithography is mold making. Since the rotary pump chip is a multi-layer device, it requires two molds. One mold for the control layer and one mold for the flow layer. The control mold is made using negative resist, which has a rectangular cross-section, and the flow mold is made using positive resist, which has a rounded cross-section after reflow. This rounded cross-section ensures complete sealing of the channels of the flow layer during operation of the market fluid device. The negative resist we typically use is SU8, which can achieve thicknesses of 5 to 150 microns. The positive resist we typically use is SPR, which can achieve thicknesses of 5 to 45 microns. This thickness is determined by the viscosity of the resist and also the spin, speed, and duration. The thickness of the resist on your mold determines the channel height of your microfluidic device. At first, I'm going to be making the control mold, we use SU8, which is a negative foot resist. When we do that, we spin the foot resist onto the wafer, as so. After the spinning is done, we take the wafer and soft bake it in two steps. One step at 65 degrees, and then at 95 degrees, and then we expose it. We expose the wafer on our Carl Sears contact aligner. That shines UV light through a photo mask onto the wafer. We use two different types of photo masks, one being a transparency mask, the other being a chrome mask. The transparency mask can achieve resolutions of approximately 10 microns. The chrome mask can achieve resolutions of below 1 micron, but is significantly more expensive than the transparency mask. This is a negative tone mask for use with negative resist. This is a positive tone mask for use with positive resist. After we load the mask, we load the wafer and expose it. After exposing the wafer, we do a two-step post-exposure bake. One step at 65 degrees one step at 95 degrees, and then we let the wafer cool before we develop. After post-exposure bake, we develop the wafer. Since this is negative resist, the developer removes any non-exposed resist, transferring the pattern for the mask onto the wafer. As you can see, after developing, the pattern from the mask is transferred to the wafer. The wafer is now ready for heart bending. For both the flow and control mold, we use four inch wafers. There are some differences in the steps for making the flow and the control mold. For the flow mold, before we coat the wafer, we expose it to an adhesion promoter called HMDS. After the adhesion promoter, we coat the wafer. After coating, we do a single step soft bake of the wafer. After the soft bake, we expose the wafer. And since this is a flow mold, we use positive resist. And for positive resist, we use a positive tone mask. After the exposure, we immediately develop the wafer in positive developer. The positive developer removes any photoresist that has been exposed to UV light. As you can see, after development and cleaning, the pattern from the mask is transferred to the wafer. Now the wafer is ready for reflow and carpet. Once the moles are heart baked, we treat them with a solidizing agent. We use either TCS or TMCS. Treatment with the solidizing agent makes the PDMS not stick to the mold and makes it easy to work with. PDMS is a silicone elastomer that consists of two components, an A component and a B component. The manufacturer's recommendation for the mixing ratio is one to 10. First, we'll be making the PDMS for the control layer of the rotary pump we will be mixing a 5 to 1 ratio of PDMS. So we have our two components, your A and the B. So we take the mixed PDMS and pour it on our wafer. In this case, this is our control wafer. 
as you can see, there are plenty of bubbles in the PDMS. If we were to make the, the chip right now, the chip would be useless, be full of bubbles. So the next step is we degas. The degassing takes about half an hour. Once the bubbles are removed, we bake this layer for about an hour to partially cure it. So then we can uh, thermally bond it to the 1 to 20 layer. For the flow layer for the rotary pump, we do a thin layer of PMS, and that's of 20 to 1 ratio. And this is a, a similar spin coater that we used for the photoresist. And then we spin it. Once the spinning is done, we remove the wafer and bake it for approximately 40 minutes. Once the baking is done, we remove our two bolts and then we cut them up. small particles of PDMS, any dust that may have gotten on the wafer. You place your thick layer on top of your thin layer. Try and do a line with your alignment marks. we are aligned, we then bake the, the chip at 80 degrees for another hour. After incubating for an hour, we take the chip out. At this point, the two layers should be bonded together because of the thermal bonding from the two different ratios. The crosslinker in the 5 to 1 ratio is diffusing over the interface between the two layers into the 20 to 1 ratio. So we should have a single piece of PDMS. this to bond the PDMS to the glass slide. What this does is it modifies the surface of both the PDMS and the glass slide so we can bond them together. It's a very strong and permanent bond. Once this process is done, we take out the chip in the slide and place the chip on our substrate. and it bonds. Once we, we place it on, we put this in the oven for another 10-15 minutes just to ensure we have a good bond. 
After plasma bonding, we generally wait overnight to test the chip. You can see this is a very strong bond. I can't peel it off with my fingers. To test the chip, we place a 20-gauge needle into the hole, connected to Tigon tubing, connected to an air source. You can see on the screen, this is the, the rotary pump. And as I turn on the, on the air to turn the valve on, that's closed, that's open. Generally, these, these work at around 10 PSI. This concludes our video on the production of a microfluidic device from the, from the mold making to the chip making. If you have any questions, please contact the Stanford Microfluidics Foundry.